Good morning, everyone. Today, we're going to be talking about what is new in this update, as well as the whole Niji Sanji situation. But before we jump into all of that, if you're new to the channel, I upload NGS content daily. So if you do play this game, I would really appreciate a subscribe as it really helps out the channel. Anyway, without further ado, let's begin the video. So the very first thing I want to point out is if you play on the Xbox or if you play the game through the Microsoft Store, there is an issue, there is a delay in the patch, which means you cannot play the game. When you try to launch the game on either your Xbox or through the Microsoft Store, you will get an error message, I believe it is 640, uh, and you just won't be able to launch the game simply because you have the wrong version of the game. Now, re-downloading the update or re-downloading the game will not solve this issue. This is an issue on the Microsoft Store platform itself, and uh, Sega is working to try to fix this issue. Unfortunately, uh, there is some delays. So hopefully by the time you see this video, this will be resolved, but at the time of recording, unfortunately, this is still an issue. The next thing I want to talk about is we do have a new Urgent Quest, Halfia Late Counterattack Part 2. Now, do keep in mind that all of the Alio Region Urgent Quests have been changed to the Halfia Lake Counterattack Part 2 for the entirety of this week. So whenever an urgent quest comes up, you are guaranteed to get this urgent quest. And I do recommend people to run it because the rewards are pretty good. You can get rare weapons as well as all of the armors. So that is pretty nice. Now something to keep note over here is they have also added items to Major Target Suppression Mission Halfia Lake Interception Part 2. So this is the four-man version of Malevolent Dark Falls Aegis. And the items they have added is you are are now guaranteed four Aegis Soul 4s every single run, so it's actually worth running quite a lot, especially if you want to just build a ton of Hell Finales. So uh, I do recommend running this over and over and over if you have the patience or if you want to do it, simply because the rewards are now a little bit more better compared to just getting one Aegis Soul 4, you are now getting four every single run that is guaranteed. So that's a lot better than before. The next thing I want to talk about is the AC Scratch Modish Winter is finally re implemented into the game, they have sort of not really fixed the issue. Now for those who are wondering what the issue was, was when you were using these double eyelids over here, what happened was instead of applying it under your eyes, it was actually applying it in front of accessories. So it looked really, really weird. Actually, you can still see a little bit of remnants over here. You can see that uh, my eyelids over here are a little bit peeping out. You know, it's not exactly uh, on top of where my eyelids are supposed to be, like on this one right here. It looks really, really weird. And especially if you do a little bit more customization with the eyelids, it would just totally bug out and uh, it was absolutely ruined. And unfortunately, they did not really really fix the issue because as again you know I can show over here with the eyelids B you can see that my eyelids are clearly here my eyelashes aren't covering the eyelids you can see there's a line up here if you just pay a little bit of attention hopefully you guys can see in the video um it's really clear for me in the screen let me see if I drag it bigger uh, maybe like this you can see it a little bit more clear yeah there we go so you can see there's you you see there's my eyelids or where my eye begins the eyelashes itself is kind of like clipping into it or like above it or floating above it it's just kind of weird it's not exactly perfect um, however, they do have a different version over here, which does look a little bit better. It's still not exactly right. So if you did use any of these eyelids, they are going to be compensating us 100 star gems. So that is pretty nice, I guess. But uh, it still kind of sucks that they couldn't solve the issue. I don't really know the reasoning on why this happens, but um, it's an issue and they weren't able to fix it, unfortunately. But now for the reason you clicked on this video, what on earth is happening with Niji Sanji? Well, for those who are not in the know, to be honest, I wasn't in the know till yesterday. I literally got back from my trip and I opened up Discord after a week and everything's on fire. So, you know, I kind of read through everything, analyzed everything. And I was like, okay, I think I get the general idea on what's going on. So the main problem with Niji Sanji right now is their global side or their EN side in particular, where there is a VTuber or a, I don't know what they call their VTubers, their livers, I guess. And uh, apparently she was getting abused financially and physically. And eventually, you know, they cracked, they broke down, and they they kind of exposed Niji Sanji for all their issues. And the thing is, um, Niji Sanji did not reply very nicely. They, they kind of, it was a PR nightmare. 
The TLDR is um, Niji Sanji did not take care of their talent. Their talent got really screwed over, and uh, now Niji Sanji is the big bad guy. That's pretty much the TLDR. I will leave in the description below Criticaster's video as he does go through like actual facts and statements and everything. He goes through like all of the different Twitter posts and screenshots and there's a lot of proof and uh, a lot of receipts basically where Criticaster explains the whole story in its entirety. So I highly recommend watching his video to understand the whole Niji Sanji situation. And so with all this drama with the EN side, obviously it's gonna affect the JP side as well. So Niji Sanji is under a lot of pressure right now and their PR team is doing an absolutely horrible job in trying to put out the fires. They're kind of fueling the fires. And so this comes back to Sega and comes back to us in NGS. We have a collaboration with Niji Sanji. So a lot of people have been asking me, Kara, what is your view on this? So I personally will not be buying any of the items or scratching on this virtual liver style or this Niji Sanji collaboration banner, simply because first of all, I don't know any of these VTubers over here that are featured. And I actually don't really follow Niji Sanji at all, to be honest with you guys. I'm more of a hollow life Stan, as a lot of you guys know, I have like Pecora stamps and all these other, you know, symbol arts. If we come over here and we look at my symbol arts, you can see, you know, I've got Ina, I've got Pecora, I've got Ame, I've got uh, Fubuki, I got Hachama. You know, I'm much more of a um, Hollow Life Stan instead of a um, Niji Sanji Stan. And so since I don't have any attachment to Niji Sanji, it's very easy for me to say, oh, just boycott this banner. Well, I'm not going to spend any money on this banner simply because I don't know any of the talent. I don't know any of these characters. I don't know anything about these people. So it's very easy for me to be like, oh, yeah, they're evil. Screw them. I'm not going to scratch. However, if you do like the banner, if you do like the characters, if you do like the items in this scratch, it's perfectly fine to pick them up because Sega signed this contract with Niji Sanji ages ago. Now, could Sega have dropped this banner? Yes, they could, but they chose not to for various reasons. One of the main reasons why I think Sega didn't drop this banner is simply because Sega is located in Japan. Niji Sanji is also located in Japan, so it's a lot easier for Niji Sanji to sue Sega versus other companies that might be in America, in China, in other places where they can just be like, oh yeah, we don't want anything to do with you because of the whole Niji Sanji situation and just straight up drop it. And, uh, you know, maybe they can just kind of get away with it simply because, uh, you know, Niji Sanji is under enough fire and enough stress that I don't think they're going to go out of their way to internationally sue people. That's just my guess. Now, of course, you know, I might be totally wrong about this and Sega might just be greedy and just want to all the money. And, um, you know, that could be true as well. But at the end of the day, this is just my personal opinion. I'm not going to be uh, scratching on this. I'm pretty much going to be boycotting this banner specifically because I don't like Niji Sanji because, well, you know, they, they sound pretty evil from what I understand and the stuff they've done seem to be pretty bad. And so, yeah, I'm just, just going to boycott them and just not support them. Now, if you do want to buy anything from this banner specifically because there are some really nice looking items over here so you know there are some nice uh, body pillows there's this katana camo that looks really really nice i actually really like the katana as well as just all the body pillows you know there are some nice items over here as well as the vital gauges as well the vital gauges also look really really pretty um but you know it's perfectly fine if you want to buy these items and if you want them for your own use it's perfectly fine because the money that's going into this isn't actually supporting Niji Sanji because Sega has already paid Niji Sanji all the royalty fees to make all of these assets to use them in game. So all the money that you're spending is actually going into Sega's pocket. So technically boycotting this or not boycotting it at the end of the day, it's not really going to matter. It's just kind of a statement type of thing of like, oh, I'm Caro, I'm a creator and I don't stand with Niji Sanji. I think they're a piece of and that's why I'm not going to be spending my money. 
it's that's that's really it. It's just kind of a statement. Whether I spend money or not, this money is not going to Niji Sanji's pocket. And I'm pretty sure Sega's PR team is looking at this situation and they probably already know that, oh, we probably shouldn't do any collaborations with Niji Sanji in the near future until they put out all of these fires and people kind of calm down. And you know, the timing just really sucks. Sega signed this contract I don't know, six months, eight months ago? Who knew that all this stuff would happen in eight months' time? And so, you know, uh, the, if you want items from this AC Scratch, it's perfectly fine for you to scratch for it or to buy it or whatever. I'm just saying that I personally am not going to be supporting this banner simply because uh, I think Niji Sanji is a piece of it. Special thanks to all the members for supporting the channel. It really means a lot to me. Thank you again. But yeah, that's all I wanted to cover in today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, I would appreciate a like and a subscribe. And I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. Bye.